Hey there. Today, we're going to explore V-Ray's camera settings and learn how to make our images really pop using post effects like bloom and lens glare. If you'd like, you can download the project files from the video description so you can follow along with this tutorial or explore the scene whenever you want. All right, let's get going. First, we need to find a good view of our scene in the viewport and save it under the name Views tab in Rhino. Besides moving around and zooming in and out, we can also tweak the field of view by using the Zoom Lens command or by holding Control, Shift, Alt, and right-clicking with your mouse. This will change how wide the lens of our virtual camera is. If you prefer, you can also use one of the scene's cameras to continue. Our next task is to make sure our render matches what we see in the viewport by turning on the Safe Frame toggle in the Asset Editor and starting Interactive Rendering. Most of the features we'll be using can be found in the camera rollout. Here, you'll recognize some things from real-life photography, like exposure and white balance. For example, if we slide the exposure value to the left, the exposure will lower, making our image darker. If we drag it to the right, we'll bring more light into our image until it becomes almost completely white. If you look to the right, you'll see we also have settings like ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Feel free to use these if they make more sense to you. Next, let's tweak the white balance options. Here we can pick a color to compensate for the temperature of the light in our image. This is why choosing a warm color makes the image look cooler, and choosing a color from the bluish part of the color wheel gives our image a warm tone. Now, what else can we do with V-Ray's camera settings? Using V-Ray's camera settings, we can easily recreate a depth of field effect. Like with real cameras, the depth of field effect makes objects in focus look sharp, and everything else become gradually blurred. At first, you might not notice a difference because the defocus amount is set to zero, but moving the slider to the right will gradually increase the depth of field effect. Right now, everything seems blurry because we still need to choose a focus point using the small cursor icon. This will help us select a point in our scene where we want the camera to focus. If we know the exact distance from the camera to the object we want to focus on, we can type that in manually. Another real-life camera effect we can mimic is motion blur which makes fast-moving objects look streaky in a photo. For this to work in our scene, we need to set up a simple camera animation in Rhino and enable the animation in the V-Ray settings. After doing this, we see that we have some new toggles enabled, like motion blur and camera motion blur, which correspond to blur from moving objects and blur from camera movement. Let's do a render to see how the effect looks so far. It's subtle, almost impossible to notice since we don't have a slider to control it. To adjust the strength of motion blur, just like in a real camera, we need to tweak the shutter speed. Because the value is the reciprocal of what we type, a smaller value means the shutter stays open longer, leading to more motion blur. Before we render, we should adjust the image exposure using the ISO parameter to make sure the image doesn't get too bright or too dark. Once we're happy with our camera settings and we've rendered our image, we can focus on some post effects. Let's select the lens effects in the VFB and turn them on using the checkbox. Here we can tweak some settings, like adjusting the size of the glares and how strong they are. Remember, lens flares usually happen in real life because of little imperfections in a camera's optics. To mimic these imperfections for a more realistic lens flare, we can adjust the lens scratches settings. This helps us recreate the effects of scratches on our virtual camera's lens. We can control things like the length, direction, and number of scratches, and you can see these changes both in our image and in the Aperture Preview window. Now let's turn off the scratches and try a different effect that mimics dust on the lens. Here, we can create different types of random spots on the lens, or even patterns like hexagonal and square. I like this effect, so let's tweak it a bit. The main thing affecting our image is the number and size of the dots we're creating which are controlled by the zoom factor. We also have a general multiplier to adjust the overall impact of the simulated dust. The last type of imperfections we can add is peripheral grating, which can mimic the tiny bits of dirt that collect in hidden parts of the lens, like the edges. The result is halo-like effects around light sources. The settings are pretty similar to the other effects we've used, and once again, things like density, length, zoom, and strength will determine how our final image looks. Again, you can see how each of these settings changes the shape of the lens in the aperture preview. Lastly, let's save what we've done so far. 
Thanks for hanging in there until the end. By now you've learned how to use V-Ray's camera settings and how to make your images really stand out using post effects like bloom and lens flare. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching. Thank you.